Dad, the phone. Who is it? They said they're from Sky TV Collections. Hi. Oh, no. Give it to your mum. No, they said they want to speak to you. Say I'm sleeping. Huh? Say I'm sleeping. Oh, he said he's sleeping. No my heart of my kid to Tene Fare. I'm Madam Blair and yes, we're still here. Yes, we're still here. I'm Madison Butler and that means that Adam didn't get us fired last week. So let's check out what's coming up on this week's episode. We're at the beach with Kiwi fan Nita Maynard and find out about the Mahi she's been doing behind the scenes. Up to Breva. <laughs> I've always thought Canberra was a little bit boring, but these two Raiders legends have got me thinking. Hmm. <laughs> Plus, we are joined by one of my favourite players, Kiwi Fin powerhouse, the amazing Mele Hufanga. You do not want to miss this chat. Like, isn't it all the stuff we do behind the scenes? Oh, like, uh, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Good to see a couple of the boys, two Raiders legends. You like that one? You reckon you'll be a legend one day? Oh, probably not, but up the Raiders. 2023 NRL Premiership winners. Oh, oh just putting it out there. Nah? Anyway, let's check out this week's highlights. Barely 60 seconds in. Apuna and Tomoka remind us that the Raiders are a team on the rise. Their fella reps gets better with age. Premier winners all day. Seriously? Sorry about it. Let me crack you, G. Hey, I'm happy to crack him, bro. Speaking of cracking, how's this crack of a debut by the Ōtara Express Valance, Tefari? Tefari shakes all in. Sorry about it. Henry. Oh, Moylan. Oh, hey. Kafusi keeps on being a sad guy every week with this beauty. Kafusi oh. has made an absolute habit of that this season. Just check your ribs there, Matty Moylan. Sorry about it. Jaden Sullivan throws his name in the hat for Kiwi selection with his Michael Jackson dance moves. Oh, he just steps inside and scores. Where has he been? Sorry about it. The Tigers have done it again. And yes, the Mighty Tigers have gone back to back. That's two in a row, baby. He finds his way to the line! Up the Tigers. Sorry about it. Not bad, eh? Not bad. What's coming up next, Maddie? Well, I flew over the ditch to catch up with one of my friends, Nita Maynard. Great player, great mum, even better person off the field. She's done so much for our game. Let's check it out. Friends. Well, this show's starting to sound like I've got all the friends and you've got none. <laughs> Your accent is so strong. Oh, bad. <laughs> hey, it's Nita Maynard here from the Newcastle Knights, and you're watching The Ditch. <laughs> Still left. Now here they go. It's a try! Nita Maynard! Kiwis down the left side. Maynard slips the first tackle. What a try from Maynard! Uh, I've always played rugby union growing up back home in um, NZ from a small place in, called Gisborne. Um, so I've always played union and once I moved over here in 2011, I jumped online, found myself the closest footy team and um, joined it. Yeah, so I work for the RLPA, which is the union for NRL and NRLW players. Um, the space that I work in is um, as a female um, players operation manager. We fight for the rights, benefits and entitlements of all players. It's just about making sure that we get that player sentiment across when we are dealing with any claims or any um, any issues that arise in the game really and in particular with the growth of the women's game um, that's why I've come in to help um, Lena we specify in um, making sure that we have the players views because that's solely what we are we are the voices of the players and we're there to make sure that they're getting what they deserve Here's Jesse Southwell dummy go Jesse Southwell yeah so for the pregnancy policy so um, Say if you're signed for multiple years or even if you're just signed for one year, if you somehow fall pregnant during that, um, the club will honour um, honor your contract and see you out throughout that whole contract. So you, you, you're not cut off from the monetary value from that contract, but also there's support in place where they'll give you a job within the club if there's one that's, um, that would work for you. 
um, if not just to be a part of that team, but also give you access to the doctors, um, the physios, and that extra bit of support. You're not just ostracised because you are pregnant. So I think that's a really great win for the RLPA and players. The clubs that, who have come on board from the start and even the ones who have recently joined, um, there's just a big shift. I think at the start it was a little bit, again, like a bit tokenistic and like, oh yes, we have a women's team, but now I think everybody's um, really invested um, in the women's space and they really want to have strong pathways. It's such a great game to watch, like you see it all over the place. I know that the viewership numbers um, rival some of the other codes, um, not just in women's but in men's as well. So if we can just really start to look forward in terms of um, what the game could be instead of just the short term losses, I think the game will be in such a better space. Every time that I get to the end of the year and um, I'm getting itchy feet about uh, is it worth it, is it not, I think that's always the ultimate goal for me is um, not only just to be a part of the NRL W but also to represent my country. I love being a part of it as I've spoken about it before, it's like a highlight of my year. So um, definitely I'd, I'd still love to represent New Zealand. So good to catch up with my mate Nita Maynard over in Aussie. Small in stature, but an absolute beast on the field. And speaking of beasts, we have my favourite beast on and off the field in the studio with us, Mele Hufunga. Welcome to the studio. Thanks for having me. Mele, first question, can you tell us how you got into rugby league? Um, I started playing league, uh, I think back in high school. I think I was like year 12, that's like 2000, I'm so old, I feel old. <laughs> um, I think 2011, the first club I played for was uh, Ohu Leopards. Um, and that's where league started from there. Tell us um, about the transition from rugby to league. The good things and the bad things or the hard things to, that you had to learn and change? Um, I think back then, because uh, I came from union to league, um, I think it was, it was pretty hard back then, only because I had to learn the rules for, for league. I remember uh, one of my first games for, I think when I moved from Odehu to Ponsonby, I was playing fullback. But you know, for Union, we play Saturday, then Sunday we play league. I remember um, uh, playing that Sunday game against Richmond, I was playing fullback. And they kicked the ball over, it was fifth and final, they kicked the ball over. And do you know what I did? I kicked the ball back. <laughs> I kicked the ball back and the coach stood there and he was looking at me like, what are you doing? And I turned around and I was like, I'm so sorry, like, I just finished playing league yesterday. And he was like, that was yesterday. So I kicked the ball back to them and the whole team was so mad at me. But I was like, oh my gosh. Like, so I kind of found that a bit hard knowing that I play Saturdays and then I play Sundays. And especially like changing um, positions as well. Like there's some, some days they'll chuck me for league, they'll chuck me at wing or chuck me centre, then I'll go full back. But for union, I only stick to probably just one or two positions, which is centre or second five. But what I loved about, the good thing about league is for playing centre for union, um, league helped me change, uh, changing my angles, like the lines I run for, for being a centre, that helped me so much. The, the women's space and the women's game, both rugby and league, is becoming really good at the moment and there's, there's a pathway and there's a bit of a journey. What, like if, if we're trying to encourage other women's, women to come into rugby league, what would you encourage them about our beautiful game? I'll tell them, come to league, that's where the money is. <laughs> that's not, um, I'll probably tell them, like, um, actually, I, I would, like, in all honesty, I wouldn't put any pressure. If they like union, you can stay union. If you like league, then come through. Like, I can't really tell them what's right or wrong as long as they enjoy the game, like myself. Um, but I reckon league is a, I reckon they're a love league. So I'll just tell them, you choose where you want to go. This is a good charge into the line here from Hufunga. Hufunga, hard to contain. Has to get to within five metres of the line. Yeah. You were saying Hufunga. Tries to keep going. Hufunga still going down the sideline. Brilliant run. Great run from the eight. Gets it off to her captain, Meli Hufunga. Oh, that's brilliant. Now he's Wailia, the try scorer, Hufunga. She's a real handful. She's not going to be stopped. Maybe a chance. Good quick hands, Hufunga. Hufunga still going, puts on the bun. Hufunga gets try number two for herself. Hufunga, there she goes again. The captain, Meli Hufunga. Big smile for the fans. There's the oh. Which is probably just as well for Newey. What a run. She'll go the whole way. Running has worked so well. Hufunga acknowledges the crowd again. And the captain. 
I know a little bit about last year, but can you tell us? You obviously had the chance to play for Tonga, but if you played for Tonga, then you wouldn't be able to play in the World Cup. Tell us a little bit about that decision. Yeah, it was it was a tough one. Um, it wasn't easy, but I knew that um, obviously Tonga wasn't in the World Cup, so um, I just wanted to um, just play for Kiwis and make, uh, take the opportunity to go to World Cup as well. And literally, it was just a risk that I was willing to take. Um, and so when it all happened during that week, my manager for Tonga called me up and he, asked, and he told me if I register for Tonga, then I wouldn't be uh, allowed to play for Kiwis for the World Cup if I wanted to. So I was like, oh, OK. He told me to think about it. And the tournament was um, on that week. So I didn't really think about it. I just, after we finished talking, I hanged up. I just sat there and I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna take the risk and just say, hey, I'm not gonna play. Um, I really wanna try and make the Kiwis and um, make my way to World Cup. So I told him, let him know. And then what do you know, a few weeks later, I made the Kiwi squad, so yeah. Obviously a risk that played off and I'm very happy that you took the risk. What was your experience like at the World Cup? Oh, I loved, uh, every bit of it as well. Um, got the opportunity to not only represent myself, but my family and my country out there as well. And I just enjoyed it. The new environment, obviously, being in a league environment, coming from union to league, um, just being around everyone else. Got to meet a lot of um, amazing people like yourself, Crystal as well, um, only sometimes, but um, it was cool. I loved it, and especially just being around Amba and Neta as well. We built um, that uh, friendship, so that was really cool. At the World Cup, we called you guys the three musketeers, yeah. you, Neta and Amba. I know one of them is going to be with you at the Bronx. Was that a big part of your decision, or how did you make that decision to decide to go to the Bronx? Um, I think... For me, I just wanted a club that I know that will look after me, not only like financially, but, you know, physically, mentally as well. Like, you know, I do have a family to feed, not a community to impress. And um, I just really wanted a club. And also just for myself, like I've always been a person like in my rugby career, I've always been that person to to make teams, to cater to other people. Like, you know, because that coach did this to me, I want to do this, which I don't mind because those people, like they, they mean a lot to me, you know, but I feel like this journey that I'm about to take, um, I feel like I owe that to myself. And it's, it's just a good feeling knowing that um, if, when I do, like I know my job's not done yet. Like, yes, the team that I'm going to is obviously the Broncos, but I feel like I can't really say like I've made it, like my dreams come true unless I put that jersey on and just be at the place where I wanted to be. Then I can be like, yeah, this is where I wanted to be. And then I can be like, I did this for myself. Mindset going into games, what do, what do you think? What's your preparation like? Do you have a routine? And when you get into a big game, say like World Cup, yeah. what are you thinking? Oh, World Cup. Uh, okay, I'll talk about my preparation. Like, my, I'm probably like, I always tell this to my family and friends, like, I'm probably the worst athlete ever. Like, <laughs> you know I am. But hey, if I'm out there doing, playing 80 minutes, that's all I'm going to give. Hey, Must be nice to be able to perform <laughs> like that and be the yeah, worst athlete. I'll be, be, hey, yeah. be honest. Like, if, 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 if those who want to know me, I'm probably the worst athlete out there. But I can work, you know. I can put on the hard money, you know. You tell me to do it, I'll do it. But off the field, that's my time, you know. Like, I was, I remember going into World Cup, I told Amba and Neta, because you know all the stuff we do behind the scenes. Oh, like, uh. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Is that TikTok? <laughs> <laughs> no, we'll you me. Yeah, anyways, yeah, I always tell them, like, I'm going to go into World Cup the person I am. I'm going to come out with World Cup the person that I was. I went into. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to change for anyone. Like, you know, like, I don't want, I'm not saying that I'm cocky or bragging or anything. Like, I'm just, I just feel like this is just who I am. Like, I can do the work. You just got to give it to me or give me the chance to do it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, my dad says Gumpenella. So, <laughs> I don't know where he's got that one from, but... <laughs> Abalee trying to crash over in game number 250. Yeah, Canberra's a, a nice spot to, you know, bring up your young kids. And I, I actually moved down here, you know, without a wife and, and kids. And um, I fast forward 14 years, it's, um, I, I got three and, you know, a lovely wife who supports the, uh, the Canberra community is really supportive of, uh, especially the Raiders. Back to the short side, here's Lane Lua, quick hands, wide head for Rapata. He feasts against the Tigers. This will be my ninth year now, so yeah, been here a while since 2013. Firstly, you know, I'm, I'm very blessed and grateful that I'm still playing, um, you know, at this level at my age. You know, there's not many, too many 34-year-old wingers uh, in the game, and I think from a young age, I've just always uh, tried to play every game like it's my last. Always, you know, obviously we're 
wear my heart on my sleeve and, and give my everything and putting that Raiders jersey on, you know, there's so much history I'm with a lot of the Kiwi based players that used to play here. And uh, you know, every time I wear that Raiders jersey, I make sure I'm, I'm trying to do my best to make them proud. Well, we're to do in New Zealand and we're underway with the first game of 2023. I've got the opportunity to play for the Māori All-Stars. Uh, you know, just being in, uh, in Rotorua uh, with a packed out stadium, it shows how much the game's growing, um, not only in New Zealand, but obviously over here too with, the, with us Māoris and, and, and Islanders that are living over here. And yeah, Pacific is, is probably one of the, the most high demand people out there, so it's awesome to see, uh, seeing a lot of Samoan and Tongans and Fijians coming through and uh, yeah, it just makes the game better. Yeah, we, we still get to share and show our sort of flair as a Pacific Islander. Um, you know, I definitely know in our team, you sort of, you know, big Joe Tough, you, you've got to just let him play the way he plays and everyone just gets off the back of that. So um, they're definitely letting us uh, roam around how we do. And um, I, I think the, the more they do, the more, the more we win, I reckon. I know the bro doesn't like praises, but um, yeah, it's such an honour. And um, like you said, in 30 years' time, I'm going to be able to tell my grandkids, my kids, that you know I got to play with the, the king of Canberra, um, but probably the most humblest dude, um, second best golfer at the club. I'll take that. Yeah, I'm very honoured and privileged to be able to share the field with him, sharing the the idol half with the bro. And um, yeah, I'm not not too good with my words, but. Um, yeah, yeah, he knows uh, what he means to me and, and not only me, to our team and, and the people of Canberra. I feel like a lot of Pacific Island Māori um, women especially can relate to, you know, a bit of your story and, yeah. and growing up a little bit tough as well. So how has league and rugby been an outlet for you and helped you along your journey? Um, I guess for me it's helped me a lot in my life. Um, I'm going to tell a little bit of story about... Um, about how I grew up with everything of rugby. Um, actually, this is probably the first time I want to speak about it. So, he's a lucky. <laughs> um, back then in high school, like I started rugby for me, kicked off really quick when I was in high school. Um, obviously, I went to Southern Cross campus out here in Mangere. Um, I made the girls' rugby team at a young age, the school rugby team, year nine. And you can only be a 10 to play, so I made it year nine. I played for Auckland Storm at the age of wow, 17. When I was year 12, so that's when I started playing Auckland Storm right through till now. In 2013, after I left high school, I made the Black Friends. Um, and it was a tour happening here in NZ and everything, like back then for me, struggle was real. You know, at a young age, I had to find my own rides to trainings. You know, uh, there would be times when I would have to walk to trainings, you know, in the rain, no matter what it is. But I felt like I couldn't speak out to my family because we already had a lot going on. I didn't want to be a burden to them. And that's the mentality I had. And when I made uh, the Black Friends during that time, I thought like, okay, union's going to be it for me. You know, I made it this far, why should I stop? Um, during the campaign and everything, an incident happened. Like I was young, I had no phone back then, you know, just fresh out of high school and I was rooming with one of the girls and I don't know, like I woke up early that day and it was like seven, but I didn't know, I didn't know much of the, the person I was rooming with. So I woke up and then she went bathroom and I thought, okay, we'll both for a week. So I just turned the TV on and then I just left there, went to training. Later that day, I got a call. I got a, I had a meeting with the coaches and everyone and they kind of said that there's been a complaint, like I shall show respect to others. Um, they need their rest, they need their sleep. And you know, like when that happened, I was like, oh damn. So I apologise and then when I went back downstairs to my room, I had to move rooms while everyone was watching. I had to move rooms. Oh my gosh, I always get emotional telling about the story. Only because like, as I got older, I kind of understood like what was happening to me at that time. Mm -hmm. And I think it explains why like every time I make teams, like self-doubt is always behind me. Like, and I feel like I'm just so traumatised from that because they made me feel like those girls were better than me. They, they made me feel like... Because I'm just this, this young Pacifica person. They you know they could just push me aside.
And during that time when it happened, I didn't tell anyone, I just kept it between me, like, you know, I was like, you know what, all good, like, it is what it is, just, just move on, just, just go from there. And self-doubt, fear, you know, has always been there, even till now. And it haunts me every time, every time I make teams, like, if I make Auckland, no matter how many times I make Auckland, that feelings are stored there. Like, oh, that person's better than me, you know, I don't want to come trainings. You know, I don't, I don't want to, when I feel uncomfortable, the first thing I do is run, get out of there ASAP, instead of staying there and trying, yeah, because I don't know what will happen. That's mm -hmm. that th feeling inside of me, it's like, man, not one person asks me, like, oh, how's things at home? Mm -hmm. Or how are you going to come to training? You know, it's... I'm sorry. Don't, don't be sorry. It sucks that it takes me, for me to get older to understand what that is. And I just really wish that, like, they gave me that chance. They gave me the opportunity. Hey. And that's why, like, I value kindness so much in my life. I teach that to my nephews, the people that I meet. You know, act of kindness. And I love about kindness is it's for free. Like, you don't pay anyone to be kind. You know, and I wish they, they showed that to me. Like, instead of judging me, they could have just asked me, like, what my journey is, what's my background. Like, you know, it wasn't easy. And a lot of people just, I just felt like, they just looked at me and just like, oh, yeah, nah, I'll just push you aside. You know, it's a saying that my mom always tells me in Tongan, and it says, I got that gig alive. Soak it all in. No matter how many, people are, how many people are mean to you, you take it in. Feed off that, because that'll bring greatness out of you. And I wouldn't change it. I wouldn't change anything. Because if it wasn't for all these mistakes that I've done, I wouldn't be where I am right now. And I don't care how many times I've failed, as long as I get back up. Yeah. Nah, stuff there. I'm coming to give you a cuddle. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you've made me cry. Yeah. Uh, oh, my gosh. What a story, Mele. Yeah. You should be proud. Yeah, You're very out. proud. Yeah. Anyways. I'm just going to wipe my eyes. Yeah. <laughs> Mele, thank you. Obviously, we're extremely privileged to hear your story. And I now know more and can understand more why you're so kind to us off the field. Um, your story is amazing. And I know that um, through this platform um, and other people hearing your story, that you're going to inspire um, a lot of girls that probably don't have a voice or feel like they don't. Um, they can see, you know, someone that's Pacific Island and know that um, when they go through tough things um, or tough things happen in their life, there is a silver lining at the end. So yeah. thank you again for your story. Um, yeah, we're very privileged to have heard Thanks, it. I would say I look forward to seeing you on the field, but I absolutely do not look forward to seeing you on the field. Um, but again, thank you so much for coming in and joining us on the couch. Yeah, thank you for having me. Thanks, Adam, and thanks, Maddie. Thank you. Hey, it must be nice to be on the I'm Adam Bay, yes, and I'm still here. <laughs> what a try. Drive the game. <laughs> 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 <laughs>